Hello, in this webinar I will discuss danger signs in the newborn. It is well known that newborns are more likely to become sick compared to older children or adults. There is also a rapid progression of disease process in newborns which can result in death or disability. Therefore, a recognition of danger signs is important in newborns to help identify a serious illness, to prioritize care and to improve outcomes. The learning objectives of this webinar are to know common danger signs in newborns and to learn how to recognize them. The signs which are most useful in identifying a sick newborn are stopped feeding well, history of convulsions, fast breathing, severe chest and drawing, no spontaneous body movement, low or high body temperature and pathological jaundice. A sick newborn may have one or more of these signs. Every newborn should be assessed for danger signs during each postnatal care contact or when a newborn is brought to a health facility. Stopped feeding bell is an important danger sign in a newborn. A healthy newborn should take breastfeeds regularly without any difficulty. Refusal to feed indicates a serious illness such as sepsis, hypoglycemia or hypothermia. The feeding status of the baby can be assessed by observing baby while being breastfed and see how well a baby is positioned and attached to breast and how he or she sucks. A sick newborn sucks poorly or not at all. Convulsions are common in newborns. So there may be history of abnormal body movements or you may be able to observe abnormal body movements in the form of twitching of hands and feet. There can be repetitive blinking, eye deviation or staring look. Some newborns can present with persistent chewing, sucking or purposeless movement of limbs in the form of cyclic movements. There may be tonic posturing of one or more limbs. You need to differentiate convulsions from jitteriness in newborns. Jitteriness is characterized by tremulous movements of limbs and these tremulous movements can be easily stopped by holding the limb. Fast breathing and CBHS in drying indicate respiratory distress in a newborn. Fast breathing is characterized by a respiratory rate of 60 or more per minute. Both fast breathing and CBHS in drying are common presentation of neonatal illness. They may be caused by sepsis, respiratory distress syndrome, meconium aspiration syndrome and transient tachypnea of newborn. So how do you recognize fast breathing and CBHS in drying? For fast breathing, you need to count respiratory rate for one full minute in a non-crying baby. As already mentioned, a respiratory rate of 60 or more per minute constitutes fast breathing. Severe chest in drawing can be assessed by observing definite inward movement of chest with each breath. No spontaneous movement is an important danger sign in a newborn. A healthy newborn shows normal spontaneous body movements while awake. Lack of spontaneous movement is a sign of illness. It may be caused by sepsis, hypoglycemia, hypothermia or any other serious illness. You need to observe baby for spontaneous body movements before touching him or her. You should also note the response of the baby to handling or tactile stimulation. Low or high body temperature are common in newborn and indicate a serious illness such as infection. Hypothermia continues to be a silent killer of newborns because it is often undocumented and also remains untreated. So how do we record temperature of a newborn baby? There are different methods. Digital thermometer is the most commonly employed method. The thermometer is placed in the axilla. You must record and document temperature of every newborn baby who is brought to a healthcare facility. Human touch can be used to assess the temperature of the baby. You need to touch the abdominal baby by the dorsum of your clean hand. Depending upon the temperature of the baby, Baby will feel cold to touch or hot to touch. The temperature probe of a radiant heat warmer can also be used to record the temperature of the newborn baby. This displays continuously the skin temperature of baby. Jaundice is common in newborn babies. In most cases, it is physiological in nature and requires no treatment. However, jaundice is pathological if it appears in the first 24 hours of age or if it manifests as yellow staining of palms and soles. For jaundice, Baby should be examined in a well-lit room. You need to press the skin gently to see yellow discoloration. However, 
visual assessment of skin color is not very reliable, especially in a baby who is receiving phototherapy. Therefore, always obtain serum bidrubin levels from laboratory in pathological jaundice. The key messages of this webinar are assess every newborn for danger signs at each healthcare contact. Rapid assessment and timely intervention are essential to improve outcome in sick newborns. Healthcare workers should be trained to recognize danger signs. And we should also educate parents to recognize danger signs and motivate them to seek healthcare early. Thank you.